Hello and welcome to worship. My name is Lindsay Drake and I serve on staff here at Collegiate Wesley and it is so good to be worshiping with you today. As we begin our time of worship together, I would like to invite you to take a moment to fill out your digital connection card. We want to know that you're here so that we can connect with you. For those of you watching on Facebook, you'll find a link in the comments section. And for those of you watching on YouTube, you can find our digital connection card on our website, on our digital worship page. While you're filling out your connection card, you can take a moment to also share any prayer requests that you might have. We are a praying congregation and we want to pray with and for you. You can also take an opportunity to give at the bottom of that page. We would love to be in ministry with you and we appreciate the ways that your gifts continue to bless the ministries that we are engaged with here at Collegiate Wesley. This week we are celebrating our college students. We have several students involved in our music program and our Wesley Center and students that come to worship with us that are graduating and we want to celebrate the hard work and the amazing accomplishment that they have achieved. So we just ask God's blessing upon their work and their future. What an exciting time for them. So now let's take a moment to fill out our connection cards to share our prayer requests and give. to this time of lighting our care and community candle. We light this candle today that represents the faith and the hope and the love that we have that God hears our prayers. So today, as we light this candle, we lift up those in our community that need some special prayers. We lift up Lori Skipper as she continues her healing. We lift up Marilyn Green and Sue Scott. We also lift up all of the college students that are getting ready for finals. We lift up the instructors and all of the support staff at all of the colleges as they begin this season of finals. We also lift up those who are living in war ravaged areas. We especially lift up those in Ukraine. We also lift up those who are hurting from the recent announcement from the Supreme Court. And we lift up anyone else in our hearts or in our minds that need special love today. Let us pray. Tender and compassionate God, whose strength is made perfect in our weakness, help us believe that you receive us as we are. Help us to be carriers of your message of love, like earthen vessels that carry treasures. And may we worship you in spirit and in truth. May we live with purpose and enthusiasm and courage after the way Jesus has lived. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Pray like this. This is coming from Matthew 6, verses 9 through 13. This is from the CEB version. Our Father, who is in heaven, uphold the holiness of your name. Bring in your kingdom so that your will is done on earth as is done in heaven. Give us the bread we need for today. Forgive us the ways we have wronged you, just as we forgive those who have wronged us. And lead us not into, and don't lead us into temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. So we are on week two of the Lord's Prayer. And I'm using this book, 
the most important prayer of all, Stella learns the Lord's Prayer to teach us a little bit more about what does the Lord's Prayer mean. So we're going to dive back into the book and I'm going to start with the next line. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So this is how it goes in the book. Here's the picture that goes with it. Mimi said, let's say the next line. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What do you think thy means, Stella? Your, Stella asked. Yes, that's right. And what does thine mean? Yours, Stella asked. Yes, that's right. Papa said, God is the king or ruler over everything. God wants us to love God and to be kind and caring and honest and good. When we pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, we are asking God to help us and others to live as God wants us to live and to do what God wants us to do. What comes next, Stella? asked Mimi. Bread, Stella replied. Very good. Give us this day our daily bread. We're not just praying for food, but for all that we need to live. Stella nodded. Papa said, Stella, do you know how God gives us these things? Stella thought for a moment. Parents and teachers and friends and grandparents? Yes, that's right. God works through people. Mimi said, when I pray this part of the prayer, I am not only thinking of what I need, but I think of what other people need and how God can use me to help them. Like the food drive at church where we bring food to help others. Exactly, Papa said. When you bring food, you are helping answer someone else's prayer. Some of you have maybe donated items to the food drive that we had the last two weeks for United Way. So that's where we're gonna stop for today because we have two more weeks to talk about more of the prayer. But I hope you have a little bit more of an idea of what does it mean when we say, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven and give us this day our daily bread. We're talking about living the way that God wants us to live. And that is the good news for today. I hope you have a wonderful rest of the week, friends. Bye. chapter 16 verses 1 through 5 and 13 through 16. I will be reading from the Common English Bible translation. Hear now these words. 
the whole Israelite community set out from Elam and came to the Sin Desert, which is located between Elam and Sinai. They set out on the 15th day of the second month after they had left the land of Egypt. The whole Israelite community complained about Moses and Aaron in the desert. The Israelites said to them, Oh, how we wish that the Lord had just put us to death while we were still in the land of Egypt. There we could sit by the pots cooking meat and eat our fill of bread. Instead, you've brought us into this desert to starve this whole assembly to death. Then the Lord said to Moses, I'm going to make bread rain down from the sky for you. The people will go out to eat each day and gather just enough for that day. In this way, I'll test them to see whether or not they follow my instruction. On the sixth day, when they measure out what they have collected, it will be twice as much as they collected on other days. In the evening, a flock of quail flew down and covered the camp. And in the morning, there was a layer of dew all around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, the desert surface were thin flakes, as thin as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, what is it? They didn't know what it was. Moses said to them, this is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Collect as much of it as each of you can eat, one per person. You may collect for the number of people in your household. Thus ends the reading of God's holy word. Thanks be to God. How many people sitting around our virtual table this morning know all the words to the Disney song, The Bare Necessities, which comes from the Disney movie, uh, The Jungle Book? Baloo the Bear has always been one of my most favorite Disney characters because he always seems to know how to enjoy life, to savor life. Somehow when we come to this line in the Lord's Prayer, give us this day our daily bread, I think of all the ways that we can pray that, also all the ways that we can say that, there's an element of hearing it as though Baloo the Bear were singing it. I think Jesus would have liked that. I think Jesus would have sung along. This petition uh, in the Lord's Prayer has raised a number of questions throughout the centuries of its interpretation, largely due to the fact that the word daily only occurs in the Lord's Prayer in the New Testament. In his commentary on Matthew, uh, James Montgomery Bryce noted that the word here for daily was found on a woman's shopping list. It was found on a woman's shopping list from the biblical period referring to items needed for that day or for perhaps the next day. The petition as asking God to give us the necessities of life for this day or the day immediately following comes from a word found on a woman's shopping list. Don't you just love that? Perhaps Jesus saw his mother's shopping list, her daily list, and he was teaching us something about making our prayers for what sustains us, just like you would make your shopping list. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day what we need for today. Look for the bare necessities. The first century Jewish people also would have immediately been reminded of the Exodus when the people of Israel out in the desert had run out of things to eat and they were getting desperate and they were complaining against Moses and they were complaining against God. They were even thinking about going back to Egypt uh, where they were in slavery because even while they were there in bondage, they also had food to eat. And then God does this amazing thing. God sends quail in the evenings and in the morning he sends manna, which means, what is it? Because that is what the people of uh, asked Moses when they saw it, they are like dew on the ground. What is it? It is the bread 
from heaven. I will give you your daily bread, says God. I will give you the what is it of life, the manna, the bread from me. There is just enough every day for everyone to eat. And, and on the day before the Sabbath, there is enough for two days for everyone because on the Sabbath, everyone rested from working, even the gathering of this bread, and supposedly God rests on the Sabbath too. So on the day before the Sabbath, God sends just enough for two days. The rule is put out, gather enough for each person, no more, no less. The bare necessities. Gather the bare necessities. So here, as Jesus is teaching his followers how to pray, he is saying, pray to God to give us our daily sustenance. Pray to God to give us the bare necessities, like God did for our ancestors. Pray that God will send us no more and no less. It is important that we understand the connection between the manna coming from heaven in the Exodus and Jesus' prayer because the bread is something that is given for the community. The, man, the manna did not just come from Moses or his brother Aaron or his sister Miriam. The manna came to the Hebrew people. And in our Testament, we are supposed to recall some things how in Matthew 14, Jesus multiplies the loaves of bread to feed 5,000 people. How in the Gospel of John, Jesus says in the sixth chapter, I am the bread that has come down from heaven in order to uh, feed you. And as you eat this, you will live forever. I will raise you up and how the Apostle Paul interprets our shared bread at the communion table um, and in life, he writes in 1 Corinthians 10, is the bread we break not a sharing in the body of Christ? Is the bread we break not a sharing in the body of Christ? You must remember that in the earliest days, communion was actually a meal and the people would gather and they would all share their bread. The bread is for all of us. Christ is for all of us. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our physical sustenance and give us our spiritual sustenance too. Perhaps for Jesus, you see, they were not separate. Perhaps for Jesus, he saw that just like the Hebrew children out in the wilderness, we all need to eat. And we all need to understand that we are in a relationship with our Creator. When I was in graduate school for my PhD, I occasionally attended Quaker meetings, or sometimes they are called the Friends or Friends Meeting. And I was at a Friends Meeting one Sunday when a man stood up and he told a story of how he was in a small chapel in Asia once when suddenly he noticed that the words engraved on the altar table, which would be the communion table, were give us this day our daily rice. Give us this day our daily rice. And he commented that surely that made so much more sense to people living in that part of the world. Jesus is talking about the food that fills us, the food that we know, the food that we love. He ties it to himself in Matthew 26. After blessing the loaf, he took it and he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body. Lord, give us this day our daily bread or our daily rice or our daily fill of your love. These are the bare necessities. We must not so spiritualize our prayer that we lose sight of the fact that Jesus was indeed talking about real concrete things. I was reading a story about the large number of children who are always orphaned after war. We saw it after the Korean War ended. We saw it in Vietnam. We saw it in Bosnia. We saw it in Syria. We see it in Afghanistan and we will see it in the Ukraine. 
and often relief agencies come in to deal with all the problems of having so many orphan children. And I was reading this article about a person who had been involved in such relief efforts and they talked about something that they witnessed among the children. Even though the kids were provided uh, three meals a day, they were restless and anxious at night and they, they had difficulty sleeping. And as the workers talked to the children, they soon discovered that these kids had great anxiety about whether they would have enough food for the next day. And to help resolve this problem, the relief workers in this one particular orphanage decided that each night when the children would, were put to bed, the nurses would place a single piece of bread in each of the children's hands. And the bread was not intended to be eaten. It was simply intended to be held by the children as they went to sleep. It was kind of like a security blanket, reminding them that there would be provision for them to meet their needs the next day. And sure enough, this bread calmed the children's anxieties and helped them to sleep. They needed the bare necessities, the assurance of nurture. When we are anxious, when we are afraid, when we are uncertain, when we are in grief, when we need courage, when we are orphaned, when we are called to stand, give us this day our daily bread. Here at Collegiate Wesley, we have a great food ministry as we participate in Food at First, the little food pantry, and gathering of food for the United Way. We feed our college students and our congregational care meal train led by Megan Farrell makes sure that people in our community feel fed and nurtured when they are in a time of need. You might say that these are the bare necessities of our life together. The simple bare necessities. When you think about our ministries, look for the bare necessities. Let's look to Jesus Christ, whose body we all share in, who is the bread of life. And let's look to the ways that we make sure that everyone has enough bread. Just how God made it so in the Exodus is the bread we break, not a sharing in the body of Christ. So let us pray this prayer, this give us this day, our daily bread. This is the bare necessity. We are not given license to ask for great riches, but we are encouraged to make our needs known to God. And we, as God's people, are asked to understand the needs of others and to try to do something to help. We are not just to pray in general. We are also to pray in real ways, for real things, for real people. Give us this day our daily bread, the bare necessity. Let us be in prayer together. Gracious and abiding one, hear our petition. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us what we need to feed ourselves, to feed our souls, and to feed the world. This morning as we gather, we lift up those that we know are still standing in need of prayer. Lori Skippers for continued recovery. Marilyn Green, Sue Scott, people whom we name in the privacy of our minds. And we pray for the people of the world. This morning we pray for women everywhere, women who have been mothered, women who mother others, women who stand to heal the world. We remember also the people of the Ukraine. We pray for them with constant earnest prayers that their suffering might cease. And we remember them and we pray that they might find courage and hope and mercy. And as we pray all these things, we say the great prayer that you taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may you go with the love of God to walk in the way of Jesus, ever uplifted and sustained by the work of the Holy Spirit. Amen.